So the quest two is ruined once again. It's astonishing to me that this is still happening. Over a week ago, I made a video covering everything that was happening regarding the quest two, the quest three, and the PSVR two. Mere days after uploading that video, Meta made, in my opinion, one of the worst decisions since killing Echo VR. So today I'm wrapping up everything that's happened over the last two weeks regarding the quest two's newest update, the quest three getting leaked again, new rumors surrounding a quest three reveal potentially next week, the new PSVR two games incoming, and Meta's newest dreaded run from it, Destiny still arrives heart breaking decision. And if these videos are at all useful to you and you want to help me pay my taxes, I didn't realize needed paying because I didn't realize the government could legally take that much of a single person. Like, how is how is that legal? I like and sub will go a long way in keeping me out of jail. jail. Also, join my Discord at discord.gg forward slash get hip if you hate me as much as I hate me. Okay, so what is happening? Last video, I briefly touched on update V54. That would include the ability to customize your home environment skybox. This update is now out, and I assume like most quest updates, if you own a quest tube, you will eventually get the update as it progressively rolls out for more and more users. So boot up your headset and check for any new updates if you want Zuck's lips on your sky as soon as possible. I unfortunately haven't gotten the update yet, so please tell me in the comments down below if you've gotten it. Along with this update, the Quest Pro controllers also got an update to their positional tracking accuracy, which was already very good but now it's even better for those of you that aren't broke and own uh, quest pro controllers but along with this update and meta's addition to home customization they are simultaneously wrecking the meticulously built homes of thousands of quest and rift owners if you have access to a gaming pc and link cable you'll likely be very familiar with the far superior oculus home environments coincidentally i spoke about these home environments and how awesome they were last video only to have meta obliterate the entire feature mid days after talking about it in that video i may have jinxed us i may have made one too many Zuck jokes in that video. Basically, if you have an Oculus home that you've spent years worth of memories in, upgrading it, building it out, putting your in-game achievements up on walls, building shelves for your physical Oculus library of games, setting up a meticulously placed archery setup, getting a dog, getting a wife, and building an Oculus virtual family, you will have woken up a day ago realizing that Zuckerberg has burned everything to the ground. You no longer have anything to live for in a left with the quest home environment with the customizable skybox of Mark's face. It's official. I just booted up my old Oculus home that I spent hours building back in 2018, and literally everything is gone. God has left us. Long live Zuck. Seriously though, I literally left with a blank white void with no way to access my old home environment. For those of you who play purely natively on Quest, you probably won't get how much of a big deal this is. And I appreciate that realistically, the Oculus home environments do misalign with Meta's current native VR focused vision. Not to mention that some users with a weaker gaming PC found the home environments annoying as it was essentially like booting up an entire game every time you opened the Oculus app. And I appreciate that not everyone cares about this feature as much as I do. This is, at the end of the day, a video made by me, made on my channel. So believe it or not, this will also be my opinion. The problem I have with them wiping them from existence is due to the two following points. One, Meta literally said f***ing nothing. He would just woke up to years of work gone. No warning, no time to record their environments, take photos, have one last walk around. They just up and wiped them, seemingly hoping that this would slip under the radar for most Quest users. If Meta had just made an adult mature statement explaining why this needed to be done with a reasonable explanation, this situation wouldn't be what it is. Instead, we're left in the dark feeling voiceless, like Meta don't care once again, and are left with one message from one random Meta support agent responding to a random user questioning what happened to their home environment, with the support agent vaguely stating that Meta has stopped supporting the older Oculus Home experience. The support agent does state that they hope to bring some of the Oculus Home customization features into the future, the key word here being hope. Two, Meta aren't replacing this with anything. We went from beautifully customized home environments that users have put years of time into to a white empty void. Perhaps what is left of Oculus Home and Meta's vaults will eventually be repackaged and re-released in Quest Home updates, but it's fucking ridiculous to me to wipe the entirety of Oculus Home and provide PC users with literally nothing other than a white blank plane. Like, this doesn't feel like a calculated decision. This is clearly worse for the user. Like, a lot of what Meta has done recently. No port of the Quest Home, no optional backgrounds, just a white blank void. But most importantly here, people are just f***ing sad. I mean, reading through the virtual threads and posts of users asking where their virtual home has gone is just depressing. And seriously, I, I'm sad. I wish I could have recorded some of the footage of mine before it was wiped. The more I think about it, the more sad I get about it. I, I remember when I bought my brother his first VR headset and I gave him a, a tour of my virtual home. Look, like with Echo VR, this shows that once again how disconnected Meta seem to be with their own Metaverse claims. Trying to sell the general public on virtual clothes that they can own with real money in the metaverse while simultaneously proving that at the end of the day you literally own nothing here and they'll wipe years of your work without even a proper explanation or announcement what the f 
Amongst this, instead of making a proper announcement or explanation as to why they're making thousands of VR users virtually homeless, Baldybug showed off the Quest Pro's mixture. <laughs> Baldybug showed off the Quest Pro's mixed reality features working in a moving car. Honestly, it's pretty impressive. The footage shows the Quest Pro being able to properly track virtual sticky notes on a window while the car's moving, music shortcuts, visual effects, and even a full avatar without interference from the outside world. Personally, I'm not exactly interested until I can use the Quest Pro while drifting a Subaru 22B sideways. Update V54 added notification support for apps like Messenger and Facebook so I can read your mother's DMs while maintaining a combo in Kitsuna AI. Palmer Lucky, the founder of Oculus, recently did an interview where he publicly praised Apple's VR headset. He stated the Apple headset is very, very good. He said that he's not seen the final headset, but he's seen an earlier version of the headset and it is excellent and it's going to be a huge deal. Honestly, this is kind of surprising to hear. After the Quest Pro's dead launch, there's a lot of skepticism surrounding work-focused VR headsets. That said, Phil Schiller, I don't know how, Phil Schizzle, who leads the Apple store, pushed for the Apple VR headset to have a, quote, strong gaming component. That's also what your mother likes to call my magnum cock. Skiller is known to have a VR VR car racing rig at home, reported by Mark Yurman from Bloomberg. Skiller may see gaming as a lucrative potential avenue for the device's app store. And apparently, gaming wasn't a focus for the Apple headset until recently. Honestly, hearing this does make me kind of skeptical. It seems like this headset doesn't really have a clear vision going forward, but if Apple are going to get into the VR space, they have to start somewhere. Sometimes you gotta f*** it up in order to pull it all back together. And hearing Palmer Lucky's praise is exciting, but with all of these conflicting reports and seeming confusion within Apple as to where to go with the headset, I honestly really don't know what to think. Maybe there's some major 4D chess play plan here that will be revealed at WWDC that I am just not remotely privy to. Tell me what you're hoping to see from Apple's headset down below. Uh, because my opinion on this topic is dog ass. Palmer Lucky also spoke about the Quest 3, stating that it's going to be a lot more compact, a lot more powerful, and it's going to be a really great headset at a much more affordable price than the previously mentioned Apple headset, which, by the way, could be potentially yeah, $3,000. Don't expect an Apple VR headset review from my broke ass anytime soon. Speaking of the Quest 3, it leaked again, this time on the actual Quest Store. Reported on by Upload VR, all apps on the Meta Quest Store now list the Quest 3 as supported when viewed from the VR Store app. You can see here, the platforms listed are the Quest, the Quest 2, the Meta Quest Pro, and the Quest 3. On the mobile app, you'll just see New Quest, and on the web browser, you'll see Unknown. Now, of course, this has led a few people to go Goopy Goblin, Gamer Ape shit, and anticipate the Quest 3's reveal next month at the Meta Quest Gaming Showcase. I personally doubt this, especially as it doesn't really align with Zuckerberg's statements that the Quest 3 3 will release later this year because I don't exactly consider June to be late in the year. But the Quest platform has definitely lost a lot of its steam in comparison to where it was last year. So a last minute panic reveal from Meta at the Meta Gaming Showcase wouldn't be completely insane, but it also kind of would be insane in order to get ahead of Apple's VR headset hype, especially after Meta laid off even more freaking people. Meta is not exactly in the best position to go without any product launches until October of this year. But I think if we're being completely realistic here, unlike some of these articles, if the Quest 3 was to be revealed and then go up for pre-order at the Meta Quest gaming showcase next week, we would have most likely seen some production leaks by now. The Quest Pro had a ridiculous amount of product leaks and product information released once it begun production and various different companies involved in production were able to get hands on. The point I'm making is if the Quest 3 was in production right now and was going to get revealed next week and was going to go up for pre-order next week, we would have seen a lot more regarding the Quest 3, its lenses, its display, packaging, and perhaps even an entire headset, just like we got with the Quest Pro by now. But with all that said, I don't think it's totally unrealistic to expect some sort of reveal or at least comment or update on the the Quest 3 at this gaming showcase as an attempt to at least steal some focus from the Apple headset and then set up the Quest 3 for a more hyped release in October. Tell me what your prediction is down below. I don't really freaking know at this point. Uh... <laughs> Basically, I'm expecting a couple of major game reveals at the Meta Quest gaming showcase and then a Quest 3 reveal at Facebook Connect in October like God intended. Jim Ryan, the president of Sony Interactive Entertainment, spoke openly about the PSVR 2, stating that it's premature to judge its initial release and that he's pleased with the headset's initial reception. He also confirmed that many more titles are to come, hopefully some fully fledged first party titles, we'll see. And he did previously state that there is over a hundred different projects in the pipeline for the PSVR 2. I really appreciate to hear this sort of passion for VR from a CEO like Jim Ryan and the PSVR 2. If you haven't heard me talk about a million times already, 
it's pretty f***ing great. It's pretty amazing. And just a few days after Jim Rohn made these comments, we obviously had Sony's PlayStation Showcase, which showed off trailers for a Resident Evil 4 VR mode, which looks freaking amazing. Like, dude, look at this! Along with Arizona Sunshine 2. And also another trailer for Synapse, a game by Endreams, which I'm pretty interested in. Looks pretty cool. You can now use your phone to give your VR chat Zuckerberg skin suit full body tracking. The app driver for VR can connect to VR chat on the Quest via OSC by entering your headset's IP address. There's a fair few videos detailing how to do this, and I'll link them down below. It's pretty straightforward, but of course, the quality isn't as good as, you know, Vive trackings, but that's to be expected. Let's be honest, it's a f***ing phone app, but at least you can hit the gritty one morning you're now non-existent oculus home thanks dad